So I'm not gonna lie, I feel nervous to make this video. I actually feel my palms getting sweaty and part of me feels a little bit dumb to feel nervous about this um, because it's not like I'm saying anything that crazy. Okay, so I had to bring Bowser in here. I thought I was gonna go insane. He was barking up a storm downstairs and now you might hear him loudly breathing. I clearly get very uncomfortable with this topic, which was kind of the point that I was gonna say. I feel like I have all of these things against me filming this morning. Um, Bowser is freaking out and the right when I get him to leave, the neighbor starts mowing his lawn. I don't know. So if you hear a buzzing noise, that's what's going on. Anyways, back to the point. Um, clearly, I'm a little agitated, I think, because I'm emotional even thinking about just talking about all of this. So what I was trying to say was that I don't love making videos about things that I'm still currently going through. There's a lot of reasons for that. One, I feel like when I do that or the thought of doing that makes me wonder if that is kind of pointless and if it's kind of self-serving, like there's not really like an end point to my pain. There's not really a purpose. And I don't like that. I feel like I want there to be like a point, a point to my pain. And I want there to be a point to the story, something that hopefully you guys can actually garner from, not just like me whining on the internet. But that being said, if you followed my journey for a long time, I've been making up videos on the internet now for we're going on 10 years. Um, I have talked a little bit, I've made lots of comments and I've made a couple of videos about the chronic pain that I deal with. And part of the reason, I mean, I like make these little comments but I don't make full on videos, like I said, is because this is still something that I'm actively going through right now. Um, and I didn't want to just make a video complaining, but I'm, I've mentioned a few times, especially on Instagram recently, the stuff that's been going on in my life with my pain and my injuries and I got such like overwhelming feedback. I got a lot of messages from you guys saying that you understand and you're struggling as well. And I do think there's a little bit of a different dynamic now struggling with chronic pain and being a mom because it's something that like I didn't even, I did think about it obviously because you guys know that that was part of the reason I didn't think I thought that I didn't want to have a biological child was because of my chronic pain and how long I've struggled with it. And I had come to the conclusion that everything was going to get worse if I tried to have a baby. We'll circle back on that. Um, but also, I, I didn't, I don't know, it's weird. It didn't really occur to me, oh, lots of people deal with this. And since having Logan, there have been a couple of times where I've Googled things and I've wound up in forums of other moms who talk about similar things that I have felt and dealt with, like, you know, changing my baby's diaper causes me a lot of pain. And people saying, you know, like, I tried to change their diaper, his diaper, and I ended up sobbing because I just couldn't believe how difficult something so simple, like the supposedly easy part of motherhood was. And a, a couple of those times that I found the forums, I would end up just crying myself and it, it made me feel like there was a purpose in sharing the pain, even while I'm going through it, even though there's not a happy little bow tie at the end, because I feel like the purpose of the pain, you know, in those people's cases on the forums that they, sh they shared was I felt less alone. I would read their stories and I'm like, wow, like duh, right? We all think that we're like unique or one of a kind, even if we're not consciously thinking it, maybe we're throwing like a low key pity party and then seeing someone else's, I don't like the word pity party. Anyways, you get what I mean. Seeing that someone else is going through the same thing or something similar can really kind of like snap you back to reality of like, oh wow, like I'm, yeah, I'm not alone. And I think that's the reason I wanna share this today. Now, please, first off, have grace with me. My words and thoughts are literally all over the map because A, I, you know, I, I didn't come in with notes. That's kind of a way that I've decided to present more of these chatty videos is without notes. I've done all kinds of things. I've scripted videos, I've done notes. I kind of like just like bleh. Um, but second off, my brain is kind of spinning because like I said, I'm not too comfortable talking about this in, in general, um, but especially because it is something that I'm, I'm still dealing with. I don't have a solution. And then the other reason is it's really vulnerable to share 
you know, vulnerable parts and medical things. It's kind of like I joke about when I used to have cystic acne. Now that is a little different because I don't have like a, a glaring sign of being in chronic pain. Like you wouldn't even know if I didn't tell you. Whereas with acne, it's very visible and I can't even tell you how many times people would come up to me or like in conversation, they'd be like, have you tried proactive? And you know, I hate to make that face because people are very well intentioned, they want to help. But when you have literally done what you deem as everything, which spoiler alert, you've never actually done everything, but you know what I mean when you have a problem and you have spent so much money, so much time, you've done, you've, you've poured in so much discipline into something, you've researched, and then someone recommends something that was like step two for you back in the day, you're just like, oh, it, it almost makes you feel not seen. Like, oh, you don't understand not only the severity of this, um, the complications of this, but how hard I've worked, how much I've dug into this. And so that's kind of the other element of grace in the comments. I, I would like suggestions because like I said, you've never truly done everything. Never. There are endless options someone could do. But I, I want, if you're going to share your thoughts, um, just to share them with kindness and that awareness. I have done so much research over the years. I have tried so many alternative treatments coming from, you know, Los Angeles. That's where I was born and raised. It's like, you know, one of the holistic and regular medicine, like medicinal capitals of at least the states. Um, I have tried so many different things, both with more of like the traditional Western medicine, as well as, like I said, holistic nutritional medicine, vitamin therapies, all kinds of weird machines. Like I've tried so much. And that's part of what has been so frustrating over the years is not only dealing with the pain, but trying so many different things and going through this cycle of like, you know, getting your hopes up when you try something new and thinking like, oh, is this going to help it? The hope is almost painful in and of itself because when you deal with something for a long time, going through that cycle over and over of like hope, excitement, is this it? and then being disappointed and you come off of that and you're like, okay, well, it, it's weird. It's like, well, what do you do now? You don't wanna just like roll over and die, like just give up, be like, whatever, this is my life forever because you really don't know when something could change everything for you and when something could be a game changer. I freaking hate that phrase so much, but we're gonna use it. You really don't know, but at the same time, and this is somewhere where I've had to get in the last couple of years. Um, so to those of you that don't know this already, I am a Christian, I'm a believer. And you know, there's different uh, denominations obviously within Christianity and people have some very different beliefs around you know, health and healing in general here on planet earth and what God's will is for their life. I am not personally someone that believes that God wants everyone to be healed. I, I don't know if that's the way to word it. Not that God wants everyone to be healed, but that everyone can just be healed. I do not believe that um, for a lot of different reasons. I'm not trying to go off on a whole theological thing, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of that perspective before I go into this statement that I have come to terms over the last couple of years with, hey, this might be the rest of my life and that's okay. I, I'm gonna have to learn how to cope with that mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things um, and settle in that and know like this might be my life. You know, some people lose an arm, that's their life. Um, it is what it is. But simultaneously, you know, holding that belief, I also want to hold the belief, the motivation, the inspiration, whatever, to keep trying, to keep searching, because just because you are in a boat right now, and this is what I truly believe, and just because maybe you've been in that boat for a long time, I don't think means you're going to be in that boat forever. And if you're anything like me, my personality can get very extreme and very like clouded and um, blinded by pain. When I'm in the middle of something, I can tend to think, this is it. This is forever. And maybe it's not even like I'm thinking it. I'm I'm feeling it. Does that make sense? Like sometimes it's interesting because Dan and I have 
very different personality types, very similar in some ways, which is what drew us together and you know why he's my best friend and why we're married, but very different in others, which is also what drew us together and why he's my best friend and why we're married. And you know, we talk about everything and one of the conversations that I've had with him over the years is the difference between like cognitive thoughts versus maybe like subconsciously thinking something and not even realizing that you're thinking something. And that's kind of what I mean in terms of like feeling like something is going to be forever. Oftentimes when I'm in the middle of something, for example, when I was pregnant, I know pregnancy isn't going to last forever, right? But I would feel like it would be this this like nonsensical feeling of like this is my forever and I would have to break it and be like, "Dude, homie, you're not pregnant forever, so this feeling is not going to last forever, so pull your emotions out of that and chill and remind yourself, you know, Nikki, remind me, remind myself that it's okay. You're going to be okay. Um, so I don't even remember like why I prefaced all of that. I mean, honestly, I feel like that's going to be a lot of this video. Um, you know, there are things that I do for my pain levels. Now, before I kind of touch that, because that's really not the point because I don't have the answer. I still struggle with all of this. I have things that I do to cope, which is what I just said that I will touch on a little bit, but that's really not the point of this video. I don't, I don't even really know what the point is. I guess just to let you know, oh my God, my hair's falling out. That's the other thing. I can't tell if I'm having postpartum hair loss or if like, I don't know. Dan says that I've always lost tons of hair. He's like, as long as we've been married, I walk around the house and like your hair's like wrapped around my freaking pant buckle. So, okay, that's what I was gonna say to back up. Um, some of you might be new to my channel or have never seen any of my videos addressing what kind of pain I deal with and what's going on. And that's because I'm not pumping those videos out frequently. I think literally the last one I made really talking about it was maybe four years ago. Um, and it was like an in-depth explanation of things going on. And a lot of people have kind of tried to diagnose me on the internet. And some of those things I have, well, really one of those things I still have not been tested for because there's not... The, t the testing isn't super definitive. It's gotten better over the years and it is something that I'm still looking at, but I'm not there yet. Um, and that is, side note, Ehlers-Danlos. I've never been diagnosed by so many people on the internet with one thing as I have with that. And I agree with a lot of you on a side note that I won't be surprised um, if I have it. If I do have Ehlers-Danlos, I think I'm on the extremely low end of the spectrum because when I've looked into how people are suffering from it I'm like whoa that's like way more extreme than what I deal with so to back up to what I deal with I'm gonna try to give the shortest summary I can I'm focused Nikki don't give a long blabber fest because it's a long story a lot of my problems um I think are all kind of stacked on each other and started it started really young when it honestly it probably started when I started getting migraines when I was like 10 years old and I had to be, um, I had to go to the hospital for them and get some injections. And from there, I started getting other weird things like my kneecaps started dislocating. And then I snapped my hip when I was 14, had to have hip surgery when I was 16. Then I kept dislocating my left knee. And um, then I ended up having knee surgery in my early 20s, shortly after marrying Dan. And pretty much throughout the years, there is, gosh, it's a extremely long story. It's really hard for me to summarize it. But my life has basically been um, full of a lot of random aches and pains and injuries that last a very long time. Um, for example, stupid, but if you watched my breastfeeding journey, you know that I basically sprained my wrists using a hand pump for the first six weeks that I was pumping. Um, my wrists are still not better. And I stopped that, like I said, about six, well, it was, so I stopped that about two and a half months ago. And my wrists, yeah, are still not better. They're not bad, but they're honestly still like, they're only like 75% healed. I heal very slowly from things. I have like a scar on my arm that was from a small scratch when I was doing a show at Universal Studios like mm, oh my gosh it was pre-YouTube so that was probably like 11 or 12 years ago it's unbelievable that that scratch is still there it was the tiniest or that scar is still there it was the tiniest scratch and that kind of summarizes what happens throughout 
my body. Um, injuries for me tend to hang around and often become chronic. And that's kind of the other thing about, you know, my mental state and me saying that I can kind of become a warrior um, about things or not a warrior, but I can feel like this is going to be forever. Part of that is also from my my past and my history of things hanging around for a long time something coming into my life a new ache a new pain a new injury and it's like oh okay i gotta deal with this and then it's like why isn't this going away and it's like uh it's been months uh it's been years and you know i can think back and remember when those things first appeared and i thought i was just gonna heal from them and they never did and I heal from things. It's not like everything that ever happens to me, I never heal from. But low key, it's kind of like that. And it's really embarrassing. And I know that shouldn't be the reaction, but for some reason, and maybe you guys are gonna be like, for some reason, Nikki, it's very obvious. But growing up, I always had this assumption of myself that I was like too much to handle, that I was very dramatic, that I blew everything out of proportion that I was a wimp, that I had no pain tolerance. I had all of these beliefs about myself, which side note is part of what made me so proud about my home birth. On a side note, I already said side note, and I know I'm the queen of saying side note. Um, but it, it also really proved to me that I can, I can do things. <laughs> That's a really lame way to word that, but you get what I mean. Um, so yeah, I grew up with this, this feeling of like, I'm too much, I'm a wimp. You know, I'm, I'm dramatic. And so there have been a lot of times where like, well, let me back up. So with those feelings, because of that, often my pain is accompanied with embarrassment. It's not a feeling of like, I don't know, like people will leave comments when I mention it occasionally, or people will say the nicest things in my inbox about how like, I shouldn't compare my pain to other people's and I shouldn't be ashamed. Um, and I see that like on other people, that is how I would feel like, yeah, dude, you're dealing with something. But it's so interesting how in myself, it's cloaked in just embarrassment. And I and it's almost like a double embarrassment. Like I remember one of the times so I grew up a dancer. And one of the times I was in a dance class and my knee had dislocated and I like fell to the floor. And the whole class like stopped and they paused the music and they were all staring at me. I was dying. I was in so much pain my knee ended up swelling up to like a huge baseball. Um, but I remember it was like, my reaction wasn't like, oh God, ow, like, you know, and getting someone to help me, which is what I would expect from someone else. My embarrassment was like, ha, huh, yeah, I'm fine. Like laughing it off. I'm on the floor and everyone's like staring at me, like thinking back, it feels like a movie. Like everyone's like, uh, are you okay? And I was like, like a freaking slug, like crawling across, like not even crawling, dragging myself up to the front of the class where the mirror was, because you know, there's always a mirror in dance class. And I'm like, I'm good, I'm great. Like tears streaming down my face. And that's like kind of the story of me with my pain is like having something happen and instantly feeling like embarrassment. It's kind of like that Dane Cook joke about the guy being hit by the car and his shoes flying off. And he's like, that's fine, where's my shoes? And it's like, bro, you just got hit by a car. And it's like, he's so embarrassed. That's me. It's like, I had a friend come over maybe like a week or two ago and I was so excited to see someone. Obviously, we've all been a little bit uh, lacking in person social interaction lately. And so I was so excited. And at one point I had to run upstairs to get my pump and I was, I didn't want to leave the conversation. So I was like trying to hurry. And as I was going and I rounded the corner, it's like my groin kind of snapped weird. And I was like, so embarrassed. I don't even think I ended up telling her that night. I was like, oh crap, like hobbling around. And it was just like, man, I'm just like walking down the hall a little fast and I snap my groin. Like what the heck? I just felt like, of course that happens to me. Freaking of course, it's always something. And that's the feeling that I, that I struggle with is like, it's always something. And what's weird now I've been talking for freaking 20 minutes and haven't even talked about chronic pain as a mom. So we're going to circle back to that. What's weird about the whole chronic pain as a mom thing is like, you know, and, and I think this is relatable whether you have chronic pain or not because everybody's got, you know, something going on in their life. It has hindered me from being the mom that I would like to be. Um, 
you know, I threw my neck out. If you follow me on Instagram, or maybe I've even, I think I've mentioned it in these videos. If you've seen some day in my life videos recently, I didn't, I realized I didn't even say it in the voiceover where like I'm doing something and I'm, I'm like going like that. It's because my neck was frozen and it's, we're literally going on like six weeks of dealing with this recent neck throw out. And that's kind of something too, is like, I never had thrown my neck out until about a year and a half ago. And you know, it was like a random fluke thing. And that's what I'm trying to tell myself, but it has happened multiple times since then. And so now there's kind of this fear. I was texting my friend about this the other day, you know, I'm not dwelling on it, but it's a back of my head thought of like, what if this is here to stay? Like, what if this is one of my new chronic things? Um, and that's a little scary. And so anyways, when I hurt, re hurt myself six weeks ago, I basically became like borderline immobile. I could not lift Logan and I would find myself, you know, trying to push past things way beyond what I should have. Like if I was evaluating another person, I don't know evaluating is the wrong word, but like, you know, if I was able to see someone else suffering like that, or I knew what their pain level was, I was doing beyond what I should have been doing. Really. I would have been like, stop it, rest. But, but like, it was still like nothing. Like that was the thing. Like me pushing beyond my limit was still me doing nothing basically. And it was really, it was really hard because suddenly I find myself or I found myself demanding of Dan to do what I would have done. So suddenly it's like every single thing that I would want to do for Logan, but couldn't, it's like, Dan, Dan, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And it's like, it was, heartbreaking to me because I was like, I can't, I can't even be the mom I want to be. And to those of you that watched my breastfeeding journey, you know that like one of those random things was breastfeeding. Um, I really wanted to breastfeed and I got a lot of suggestions from you guys to try things like the breast friend pillow, which I do own on um, the boppy, which is not as good as the breast friend pillow, even close, but I do have that. Um, you know, I had tried a lot of things. I tried sideline feeding, tried the pillows, and it just, it didn't, it didn't matter. It was still like, there's still a setup. You're still hunching. You're still pulling up. You're, there's still, you know, I don't know, maybe not every baby's like this, but with the friends that I've talked to, their babies have been like this, that it's like, he'll kick, he'll flail. And so you're, it's still very physical, even if you try to set yourself up in the right position. And I realized, like I said, six weeks ago, I was like, oh, I really can't breastfeed anymore because me bringing the pumping in was to help aid in that and was to also hopefully acquire a little bit of a freezer stash. Um, and then it just became more and more because I realized when I threw my neck out, I'm like, I literally can't do this. Like, and that was disappointing. Um, but beyond that, it got way more disappointing once it became like, wow, I can't even pick my baby up. And um, I had, you know, messaged, sorry, just thinking about it makes me really sad. I had been talking to a friend that day. I'm not a big, like, I'm not a big crier. I know I seem like I am because I'm so emotional. I'm really not though. Like, I don't feel like friends or family really see me cry hardly ever. I don't know what it is. It's not, I've said this before, it's not something that I'm like, I cannot cry in front of people, but it's like, I get so excited by other people, I guess. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe it is that I feel like I can't cry because it's the same thing on camera. I mean, the amount of times that I've cried on camera in 10 years of making videos, it's so minimal. Um, and this friend I had messaged, we were voice messaging and I just, I started crying when I started talking about how sad it made me that I couldn't hold Logan. It was like, what? I was, I was in so much pain. I was at the end of my rope and I wasn't getting to hold my baby. Like, and it was so sad and sweet to see all of the things that Dan would do to try to, um, you know, make me feel better and keep that connection strong between us. Like, he's so sweet. He would bring Logan to me all the time and hold him up to my face. So Logan and I, could be eye to eye and we could interact that way. Um, you know, I would lie down and I love how I said I'm not a crier now, I'm like holding back tears. I would lie down with him just so I could be face to face with him that way. Um, you know, 
often when just, just walking around, Dan would, like I said, just walk up to me and hold him. I don't know. I don't even need to elaborate on that anymore. I just, it felt horrible. It felt horrible to be in physical pain, which really affects your mood when it's prolonged. I mean, and this is what I told Dan when I was in the middle of it. Like I'm used to a life now of hyping myself up every day of, you know, focusing on all of the amazing things that I have in my life and the things that I'm so grateful for and all of the things that I'm excited for in the future. I'm used to focusing on those things. I'm used to hyping myself up because the more that I can focus on all of those things, the more that the pain can kind of be muffled and drowned out a little bit. But sometimes it's like, it's like you can only hype yourself up for so long and hyping yourself up isn't even fully the right phrase for that because a chunk of that is also like giving it up to God for me and settling in that piece of like, hey, this is what it is. You're going to do what you can do and this is the day that God has given you. So that's God's plan for the day, you know, like it is what it is. So I can, I... I'm able to sit in those places a lot, but what'll happen is sometimes things will just build up, build up, build up. And I've equated this before, like pain to being like a kid being at you and going like, mom, mommy, mama, mom, mommy, mom. And you're like, uh-huh, yeah, no, hold on. Uh, uh -huh, totally, cool. Yep, no, doing some stuff, hold on, please. <laughs> and then you just like lose it. And that's what all of this is like for me. And so, I, yeah, that day I just had kind of a little mini breakdown because I was just so sad. Um, and it's, it all feels a little dramatic, right? Because like, even the fact that I can still move around, like I've told my mom before, I'm like, I would rather be in pain and still be able to be mobile and move around than like, I don't know, be in pain or not be in pain, but be immobile. Like that sounds more difficult for me. It's just a matter of I have to just deal with the pain. Um, also, to those of you that don't know, I'm not a big pain pill person because growing up, when I was first learning how to cope with all of this, so really through my teenage years, I used to take 10 Advil a day, like religiously, and I didn't know that that was a problem. I don't think my parents were fully aware of how much Advil I was taking or even fully aware maybe of the problems with that. And then growing up in like basically competitive dance culture, they're very much about like, you know, take your Advil and keep going. And so I had this mentality of like, everyone's in pain. You have to push through. The, the serious athletes, the hard workers, they keep pushing. Like I can sleep when I die, life is pain. I have realized, well, first off, I messed up my stomach from all that Advil. I don't take Advil now unless I really need to. Side note, I'm, I'm a big believer in CBD. And yes, I use CBD right now, even though I breastfeed. Obviously, you're allowed to come to a completely different conclusion. I think personally, and you shouldn't take medical advice from me, but I think personally with all of the things that we are exposed to and ingesting in the world, that the plant of CBD is like the least of our concerns. But that's the personal conclusion that I have come to. Um, so yeah, I use, I use CBD. I don't use really Advil hardly ever anymore unless I'm going through like a serious, like I did use it a couple of times when I was deep in the throes of this recent neck throw out because it was literally like, I can't even get sleep. And also there's kind of this thing I feel like sometimes with pain, um, it can just keep going and going and going. And so take having the ability to kind of knock the pain cycle can sometimes uh, calm it down in and of itself and like kick inflammation and honestly just give you that mental rest and reset that you need. Um, and I'm not, side note, I'm not against anyone that's taking pain pills. You have to do what you have to do to survive. You obviously know what's best for you with your doctor. Um, but for me, I took so many Advil for so long and it just messed my stomach up so bad. I was always nauseous. I actually think that that's a huge source of why I had severe cystic acne for years as well. Um, it was really weird. I went to like this holistic facialist one day and she goes, random question, do you take a lot of Advil? And I was like, 
I, I mean, yeah, I do. And she's like, yeah, I can see it all over your face. I was like, whoa, we'll take that for whatever it's worth. But um, yeah, you know, I'm currently uh, experimenting on a new therapy that I've never done. I guess that's the definition of new um, with my chiropractor, some pretty exciting stuff. You know, it's weird though, to be going through like what I mentioned earlier, like that cycle again. I haven't felt that hope in a while and it's kind of scary it's scary to feel hope because you're like what if i'm let down again and that's where i feel like that that balance of of having hope and choosing to continue to move forward and try and make an effort and you know yeah just try new things while simultaneously being open to and okay with whatever god has for me god has for you um i feel like that's kind of the the difficult balance i actually don't even remember where that sentence is going but i am doing a new therapy right now that i'm feeling pretty excited about i've actually felt pretty good within the last week and a half um i hesitantly say that i felt the best that i felt in a long time in the last week and a half and so it's kind of maybe weird timing to be making this video, like leave it to me to make my chronic pain video when I'm feeling the best that I felt in I don't know how long. That's very my personality type. Um, I guess that's my version of like getting a little distance from the pain and then making the video. I guess I just want you to know that if you're a mom that is also dealing with chronic pain, I mean, is it lame to say you're not alone? I feel like that's like the message of the whole internet, right? You're not alone, guys. But it's true. Like I said, it really, it soothed me to read those forums of moms dealing with the same thing because I didn't really ever think about that much that there would be basic mom things that would be difficult. And I think it's really important um, you know, people will say that having kids can be really healing with your relationship between you and your parents. And not that like my relationship with my parents was like messed up by any means, but I am seeing that as well, you know, in, in my current situation, because I just, when I can't do the things that I want to do for Logan, um, or that I feel like I need to do, I feel this overwhelming sense of like, all right. Well, hopefully he'll have grace for me. And, you know, he's not going to remember any of this, so it's a bit dramatic. But um, that's the feeling. Like, I hope he can have grace for me because I care for him and I love him and I'm really trying my best. And that is also a healing element between, you know, that I think can be where a healing element is between you and your parents. And it is between me and my parents. It's a constant. It's not even like I'm having super, once again, cognitive, specific thoughts about, my parents, you know, doing their best, but it just makes that realization of like, wow, I know my parents love me. I know my parents did their best. And I don't even know where I'm going with that. It's just, it's really, it really does show you that you just have to have grace and just let things go. Because I really hope that however life pans out with Logan and however I am, that Logan can know that that I love him and that I've tried my hardest and I've, I've done everything I can to take care of him, to take care of myself so that I can take care of him. And that's also part of it in the pursuit of, of wellness and trying to heal. It's not just for myself, like not rolling over and giving up is not just for you. It's for the people around you as well. It's, it's, it's something, Continuing the fight towards wellness is something that can benefit you and it's something that can benefit everyone else around you And that's why I don't want to give up and like I said, that's a really if you're like me I'm obsessive compulsive sometimes not literally but where it's like this is what I'm doing I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna give it my all and it's like that's disappointed me in the past um, because it's like, I did everything I was supposed to do. Why am I not better? And it's like, just because you do everything you're supposed to do in life is never a guarantee that you're going to get an outcome. Lots of people do everything they're supposed to do in lots of arenas supposed to do, and they don't get the desired outcome. Does that mean you should quit? Or does that mean you should just consistently keep going, but like calm down and let go of your expectations a little bit? I think it's the latter that, you know, you shouldn't quit. You shouldn't give up because 
then you're guaranteed to like they said it's like roll over and die like you look in nature and i think someone fought me on this recently so whatever chime in again in the comments if you want but most things in nature are either growing or dying they're not really stagnant and even if they are stagnant it's not a good situation like stagnant water it's like gross not good so you want to keep i want to keep that forward motion that reach towards wellness and health that belief that hey, something could end up having a really positive effect on my body and, you know, propel me towards healing. But if it doesn't, it's okay. And I trust God's plan for my life. And I trust the fact that he works all things together for good, for those who love him, for his plan. And I think that our definition of good is different than his definition of good. And I think that we think that good is always, you know, what's going to benefit me, what will take away my pain, what will be good for my family. But I personally believe that God is the orchestrator of everything, that it's like, it's a huge story. And just because you think that will be good for you, doesn't mean that it necessarily will be and you don't know what the bigger picture is that's just what I think I'm not God and I don't know and so you know to just like I said roll over and assume like whatever it's not happening I don't want to do that but I want to be open to his plan and I want to pursue wellness um, because that could be what God has for me and so yeah I don't know man I feel like this is all over the map and sometimes when I'm talking it's like I want to just end, but I also just want to like keep talking and talking and talking because I have like so many thoughts, but also the thoughts go in like 52 directions. Like I'm not kidding you. I swear I could be one of those people that makes like four hour podcasts. Like it's a problem. And I know some of you are like, I could listen to you talk forever, which is really sweet. But I'm sometimes like, really? I, I just blabber in circles. And you know, side note, that's the other thing about like this whole pursuing slower living thing here in Nashville that I've kind of segued towards a lot of that has come from the place of and it wasn't necessarily super planned by me because if you know my story I really felt like it was like we were being led by God I mean I believe that everything is a God thing but I really felt like this was what we were supposed to do and then so did Dan um but that being said this really has had a lot to do with my pain because you know living the life that I was living before in LA growing up being in the entertainment industry from like the age of 12 on to some degree it's very much an industry that is you know go 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 it's very about you know productivity what you can get done hustle culture as people call it and as I've gotten older as I've continued to deal with these aches and these pains they follow me around and as well as my as my faith has developed and changed, I have come to not agree with a lot of those things, to not really see the necessity in like, why do I have to push past severe pain for a show? Like it's a show. This isn't brain surgery or something that has like some super high stakes. Like why am I sacrificing my physical and mental well-being at the altar of like performance in a show? It didn't make any sense to me and I realized as time I've continued to realize as time has gone on I love I love to create art I love talking and sharing things because I'm a really big like I consume a lot of content I consume a lot of you know I don't even know yeah just content documentaries interviews speeches classes I consume a lot and I love that but I also love sharing and talking and you know working for myself from home and choosing this slower lifestyle in these recent years has really allowed me to line up my own priorities and really decide what is most important to me i mean you guys have noticed probably maybe not i haven't uploaded as much in the last like month or so i'm still uploading this is a it's my job this is literally like how i support our family homestead um so i'm still going but i had the ability and the desire to slow down when i injured my neck and i can um because a we're very lucky and very blessed but 
now my job is more self-paced. I'm able to say, you know what? I don't care enough about the money to push through this. No, it's not a whole crew waiting for me. Like, come on, Nikki, like get on set. We're all here. And do you know how much anxiety that used to cause me being in shows or you know, whether they were live shows or I had to be on set and it's like, and I would wake up and it's like, I need to sleep and I'm in so much pain, but I can't call out or I'm going to be fired. Everyone's going to hate me. What am I going to do? You know, I remember when I injured my knee, it was like the final straw that ended up leading into my surgery. And I was working at Universal Studios. And when I injured it, it was at the start of a finale, a 10 minute finale. I injured it like 30 seconds in. I continued to do the whole finale <laughs> hobbling sobbing like a crazy person with a smile on my face because it's like I'm performing but I'm like sobbing like how crazy is that and then when I got off the stage I collapsed had to go to the hospital it all ended up in a knee surgery it was crazy but that life which some of you might be like well that's real life sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do and part of me agrees with that but part of me thinks that we've been lied to and bought that lie within our culture that we have to do things. We have to be involved in this. We have to show up there. We have to do whatever. And I think that if we pause and step back, there's many times where we don't have to. We've just told ourselves we have to because of other people's expectations or whatever. And so point being, I feel so grateful to God for leading us here to Nashville and restructuring our life in a way that like, man, I used to say to Dan when we were living in LA before we moved here, I was like, do you think that I'll ever like be not stressed again? Like calm down because every day I was just, I was so stressed and a chunk of that was legitimately from my physical pain and things that I felt like I had to push past in order to do and the loud distractions I was giving myself to like not focus, I don't know what that was, that was crazy, on the pain. And it's so bonkers now being here in Nashville and being like, dude, I haven't even had close to that level of stress in so long. And a large chunk of that is I've chosen a slower life. We've been lucky enough to set up the slower life, blessed enough to set up the lower life, the slower life, but we've also chosen this slower life. And okay, I just had to hobble down the hall Um to get a new battery. <laughs> My body is flared up today, but I'm going to the chiropractor in like two hours. Anyways, um, yeah, choosing a slower life has allowed me, you know, to get more sleep, to just, yeah, just reprioritize. And I guess that's something that it's like, it's twofold in this video. I guess I wanted to share what I'm going through. So hopefully, you know, you can feel less alone if you're dealing with that as well. Also, wanted to let you know, even with my pain, I've survived. I would not trade Logan for anything in the world. And honestly, my sick little brain, it's not a sick little brain, it's totally biological and hormonal, is already like, how many more babies can I have? Which is so funny because Dan's like, what? Like I've cried a lot of tears. I've shared a lot of complaints with him of just like how hard this process has been because of my pain. Um, but I, I made it, I survived. So I want you to know like, that that is a possibility for you and that you're not alone. And also I wanted to encourage you. And I, I feel like this has been kind of like my song for the last like couple of years since moving here is to look at your life and really evaluate what is necessary. Even as a mom, I have a lot of uh, mom for a lot of my friends became most of my friends became moms like a long time ago, way before me. And I would notice in their lives as well, things that they would say they have to do. They have to do this. They have to do that. And I'm like, do you have to do that? I think that it's worth evaluating some of the things that I think moms specifically can get sucked into of things that they have to do. You know, Dan and I talk a lot about like, what was life like a hundred years ago, 200 years ago? There's a lot of things nowadays that I feel like culture forces on moms and kids that it's like, yeah, it wasn't like that before. And obviously people survived and they were fine. And like, look at where we've, we've gotten to, like, it's fine. You know, even things, and I'm not even making a stance right now about homeschooling. I'm just saying how different things have played out and how different demands are on 
people and moms and things that we think are totally normal like it wasn't always super normal especially here in the states for the government to school children right people would often be educated at home um but that's just one example of things it's like my kid has to do this we have to have this schedule it's like a lot of things i truly think that we look at as like has to happen has to be this if we slowed down and step back there are other options there are other jobs there are other schooling things there are other ways to spend our days um you know the world really is your oyster and i understand that not everybody has the same jumping off point the same luck blessings privileges whatever you want to call it but i truly think i've thought about this before i'm like if i could have like if I can like duplicate myself and have like a coaching business with people, I think I have like a skill set at looking at people's lives. And uh, maybe this is super big headed. It's like, Nikki, you don't have the skill set, but I'm just saying, I feel like I have a skill set of looking at people's lives and seeing different options and paths that they could take. And I think sometimes in our own life, we can be caged in to thinking, no, this is it. This is my this is my path. This is my one option. And I truly think that's, that's a lie that we choose to believe. So, um, this went off in like 36 different directions. So that's it. <laughs> I will hopefully see you guys back here very soon. And maybe this is obvious, but let me know in the comments if there's something around this topic of pain that you want me to talk about more. I know I didn't end up touching at all around like the therapies that I use. I have talked a little bit more about that though. And you know, I'm open about the fact that I use CBD and I'm a big Epsom salt fan and I'm really into essential oils and vitamins and good nutritious food, what I deem good and nutritious. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really go into that. So I guess I could if you guys want, but I really, like I said, just want, I'm not going to repeat myself. I've already said everything I need to say. I'm going to go now and that's all. All right. Bye guys.